All right, so we have already seen now um, Weierstrass curves and Edwards and Twisted Edwards curves as different shapes of elliptic curves. Now, in this lecture, we're going to see another important shape of elliptic curves, namely Montgomery curves. And as you can see here, Montgomery curves look almost like the general Weierstrass equation that I showed you at the beginning of the elliptic curve talk number four, uh, number five. The only difference is that there is an extra term here in front of the quadratic variable. So I'm using um, u and v here as coordinates because I want to show some maps between twisted Edwards curves and Montgomery curves. So I'm reserving x and y for the Edwards curve side and u and v for the Montgomery side. So just translate between, well, Weierstrass and Montgomery, that everything which was y is now v, everything that was x is now a u. Okay, but apart from this extra factor v in front of the v squared, this looks like a general Weierstrass equation. You can use the Jacobi criterion to prove for yourself that this is non-singular if and only if b is non-zero and a is not equal to plus or minus 2. And because it is so similar to a Weierstrass equation, the addition law also looks essentially the same. So the first three cases, which were the special ones, where we're adding infinity or we're adding, adding a point to its negative, well, let's briefly check, okay, this is again um, symmetric with respect to the u-axis, and so um, negative of a point is again flipping the v-coordinate, the sign of the v-coordinate, keeping the sign of the u-coordinate, or the value of the u-coordinate as well, the same. So adding a point to its negative, again, will result into a vertical line, and that results again in infinity as a result. So those are its uh, negative. Now, the other two cases change a little bit. So for doubling, it's again the quadrant tangent method where we're going, okay, to double a point, we need to compute the slope at the curve, find the third point of the section, and then mirror this. But the slope, well, that was the um, partial differentiation. So we now take the dif uh, differentiation with respect to u and v, and the respect to v has now an extra term p here. So apart from that, nothing has changed. For the slope in the um, case that the two points are different, and not so not each other's negative and not the same, the slope is just as in the Weierstrass case. But then when we put the points together, we're getting the resulting coordinates. There is an extra factor b here, and there's an extra term minus a. So watch out when you're computing on Montgomery curves that the addition law is slightly different from what you're used to on the Weierstrass curve. I know, used to. I mean, you've just seen it. But if you look at textbooks, you often find Weierstrass curves. You seldomly find Montgomery and Edwards curves. And so when you're using those addition formulas, make sure to notice the slight differences. All right, now let's take a look at this curve. I mean, yes, it's, it's, it's symmetric with respect to the u-axis, but what else can we say about it? Um, for pictures, we always have the reals in mind, but for cryptography, we're always going to use finite fields, and so we are interested about what happens on finite fields, and then we have at least one of the following two cases. There are two more points of order two, or we have two points of order four that double to the point zero zero. So we can see that, well, in this equation, if you plug in u equals zero, we're getting zero on the right. If you plug in v on the left, we're getting v, uh, getting zero there. So zero zero is a valid point on this curve. And on the next page, I'll show you that we are, have at least one of the two cases, two more points of order two, or two points of order four that would double to this point. And if you have this, then you get that your group order is divisible by 4. Now, the second case is obvious, but also if you have, um, well, three points of order 2, that means that your group structure, so if you're looking at what does it look like abstractly, is that you have what we call the Klein 4 group, so Z mod 2 times Z mod 2, which also has four elements. So, 4 divides the group order in both cases.
Now, looking even further ahead to the end of this lecture or this talk, is something we'll see that there is an equivalence between twisted Edwards curves and Montgomery curves. And so showing that you'll have this map between those will also prove with the next page um, that we do have points uh, that we have group order divisible by four on twisted Edwards curves. All right, so the next proof is actually important for something which I well, have claimed here, but also something I've claimed on the lecture on twisted Edwards curve, namely that the group order is divisible by, by four. Okay, the proof. It's actually not so bad this time. So we're going to do a case distinction. Assume that some things are square. Then, well, they need not be square. But if a, four, uh, a square minus 4 is a square, and remember the a was this term here in the curve equation, then we can factor the right hand side. So on the right hand side, we have this u cubed plus a u squared plus u. We can definitely take out the u term, and that gets us the point zero, 0, And then we have this quadratic equation, which we can just solve with well, what you either learned as the pq formula or as the abc formula. And it gives you two roots u1, u2, with these values. And okay, these include a square root of a squared minus 4, which I assume to be a square in this item. And if you get these points, well, then the right hand side of the equation is 0, and so the left hand side should be 0 as well. So u1, 0, and u2, 0 are points. And anything where the v coordinate is 0, those have order 2. So it's easy to see they have order 2. This equation, well, it's a pretty easy step. And then, well, we get two more points of order 2. That's all it deals with the first case. Now, if this is not a square, that we might be interested in looking at a plus 2 over b, which might be a square. Now, if that's a square, then we can again write down the point which is using the square root of this value here. And then it's a little bit of effort, which you should do in exercise. So for those taking the course in Eindhoven, this will be on the next exercise sheet. If you're doing this course of self-study, well, you can also find this exercise sheet and you should really do this computation just to see how doubling works on the Montgomery curve and that you're getting the point 0, 0. Well, that point is order 2. So this point has order 4. Needs a moment of thinking, well, if you compute times 4, is the same as 2 times 0, 0, which you know is infinity. And this point does not have smaller order because it's not infinity itself. And 2 times this point is also not infinity. Now, the third case which I'll consider, and I have to argue why it's okay that I'm writing else rather than else if, but let's postpone this for a moment. If a minus 2 over v is a square, then here's another expression and another point, which I claim will double to 0, 0, and therefore has order 4. Checking that these are on the curve is pretty easy, and even the computation to check that doubling works as intended, I mean, as claimed, is fairly easy. So just do it. Now, why is this a complete list? Why can I write else rather than else if? At this point, we have to note that we have a finite field. And if you're in a finite field, you're taking two, point, uh, two elements which are non-zero. And the two elements I'll be taking are this guy and that guy. And I should remember that for the curve to be non-singular, a was not allowed to be plus, one, uh, plus two or minus two. And that means that those two values are indeed non-zero. And then I will find field you have that either a product is square or exactly one of them is a square. And the way to prove this is something similar to what we have seen already in an earlier part, namely the use of the multipl multiplicative group, so the elements of fp without zero, so all the integers modulo p except for zero, and those are given by different powers of g. So if you run from g to the 1, well, g to the 0, that's 1, g to the 1 is g, g squared, g cubed, all the way till g to the p minus 2, that is running 
once through all the elements of FP stock. Okay, and so if you have g to some even power, well, then it's a square, kind of obviously. And if it's g to an odd power, it's not a square. So if you're looking at a times b, that is g to some power times g to some other power, also known as g to the sum of those two powers. Now, the sum of two powers, that can be even. And then a times b is a square. But if the sum is odd, then exactly one of the summits, one of exactly of these two variables, has to be odd, and the other one is even. And that means, well, either this one is odd and this is even, so then b is a square, or this one is even, this one is odd, and then a is a square. So you cannot have that all three are non-squares, and here we're using this with lowercase a b, this expression, lowercase b b, this expression, and then their product being this expression, which is essentially the first case because b square is definitely a square, so it only matters that a square minus 4, except this thing here, is a square. Okay, so we have a complete case distinction, and we have seen either two more points of order 2, or we have seen points of that double to 0, 0, and therefore have order 4. Okay, so well, now onto the promise map between Twisted Edwards curves and Montgomery curves. But I first have to explain what I actually want from such a map. Well, I want it to be a map between E1 and E2. So these are my two elliptic curves. And I also want to be able to go back. And I want it to be compatible with the group operation. So if I take P plus Q on one curve, map the result to the other curve, that should be the same as mapping p to the other curve, q to the other curve, and computing the addition over there. And whether it goes from e1 to e2 or e2 to e1 shouldn't matter. Now, the maps I will allow myself are what is called a birational map. Now, birational means it's rational in both directions, and rational means it's a fraction of polynomials. So you know rational numbers, which are fractions of integers. Rational maps are fractions of polynomials. We have seen maps between elliptic curves so far in the isomorphism section for the Weierstrass curves. And those were just given by polynomials. So denominator equals 1. Here we're allowing ourselves to be a little bit more general. So we're allowing to have ratios. We have fractions. And that means that there are some points where the denominators may vanish. But the requirement for curves to be birational equivalent is that those maps are defined almost everywhere, so that there are only finitely many points where the denominator vanishes. And, well, now that we have the case that something vanishes, we also need to be a little more careful on this right-hand side when we say, well, it's compatible with the group law, so it's a polymorphism for the mathematicians. Um, this we require only four points or four cases where all these three points, so where P, Q, and P plus Q are defined. I mean, where the map is defined on those points. Okay, so now we know what we're looking for. Let's get it. So we first want a map from Twisted Edwards curves to Montgomery curves. And then we want to map back from Montgomery curves to Twisted Edwards curves. Okay, so Twisted Edwards curves have these parameters A and D. Montgomery curves have uppercase A, uppercase B. So first of all, I'm writing down what the relationship is between those curves. It's not that any Twisted Edwards curve maps to any Montgomery curve. There's for one Twisted Edwards curve, you're getting one Montgomery curve. You can still apply isomorphisms there. So there's a class of Montgomery curves, there's a class of Twisted Edwards curves that map to each other, but within the, uh, you can't go outside this class. And so the map that we're going to describe here is mapping from 
the twisted Edwards coefficients, the A and the D, to the Montgomery capital A and capital B. Like this. And note that A is required to be non, not the same as D. That was one of the requirements uh, for twisted Edwards curves. So both are non-zero and they're not equal to each other. And then in the other direction, and you can see that these are each other's uh, inverses, you're taking the uppercase A and B coordinates and you're getting the Edwards curves, the twisted Edwards curves A and D. To map between those curves, here is what we do with the twisted Edwards curves X and Y. We're getting these U and V coordinates. And in, other, in the other direction, we're taking the U and V coordinates of the Montgomery curve and we're getting the X and Y coordinates of the twisted Edwards curve. Okay, we have fractions here, so there might be exceptions. So let's look first at the direction from Montgomery curves to twisted Edwards curves. So here we have that we're dividing by V. Well, so if V is zero, then we have exceptions. Now V being zero means exactly we're looking at the points of order two and we just investigated them on the previous page. And here we're looking at something where u must not be plus one, uh, minus one. So then that, this one doesn't vanish. And that happened in two points of order four that we had on the previous case. There's one more point that we have to pay attention to, namely infinity. Remember that for Montgomery curve and Weierstrass uh, curves, we have to take into account this point of infinity, which is a neutral element. And well, that we can't even write down in UV coordinates. So that is also an exception of this map. Of these points, we are only guaranteed to have 0, 0. And this one, these need not exist. This need not exist because it could also be the other points of order. Four. So there are at least two exceptions and maybe there are up to eight exceptions. Not sure. It depends, I mean, you can't say it in general, it depends on what uppercase A and B are. In the other direction, well, let's look at what the twisted Edwards curve has. Here, if Y is 1, then we have a division by 0. And Y is 1 happens for the neutral element, for the point zero one, 1. And that's kind of a given because the neutral element, this finite point, this affine point, the zero one, 1, nice grabbable point, has to shoot to infinity on the Montgomery curve. So this must be an exception of this map. And so, yeah, it disappears here. It also disappears on the other one. And so we definitely have to take care of 0, 1 separately. The other point which also vanishes has x equals 0. Well, okay, we already dealt with the 0, 1 point, but there's also the 0, minus 1 point, the point of order 2. And so that's another exception for the twisted Edwards curve. Now those two points are guaranteed to exist and we know how to handle them. This one, the zero one point goes to infinity and the zero minus one point maps to the point at zero zero, which is guaranteed to exist. So that takes care of the points which we definitely have and then we have maybe some more exceptions, namely if the twisted Edwards curve has points at infinity. So that depends on D being a square and A being a square. So if both of them are squares, then you'll have more points at infinity. If only D is a square, you have only some points at infinity. In the 10th lecture, we get back to what these points at infinity look like. Now, of course, for cryptography, we like the complete case. And so for cryptography, we like to have the case that there are no other exceptions, that there are no, no other points at infinity. But in any case, we would know that for the birational equivalents, it's enough um, that we know that, well, okay, we have finally many points, so we have to map those points by hand to something else. That's the end of this part.